Olympia ever. The only man to have run faster was Steve Lewis when he actually won the Olympic title in 1988. But this is the first of the three semi-final heats. The first two, plus two fast losers, will progress to the final. Carabo Savanda, the second ranked of the Botswanans, is in this. And uh, there is uh, Taha Yassin of Iraq. He's in lane two. Ocetti of Italy is in three. Walton of the Cayman Islands is in four. Bailey, Jamaica in five. Savanda, heat winner, the Botswanan in six. Montgomery, he too a heat winner, is in lane seven. Kitadani, Japan is in eight. And Zambrano of Colombia in lane nine. Just going through the participants here, here is uh, Sean Bailey, 46.51, his lifetime best. So he is actually out of the world's top ten. Savanda, 45.40, his fastest ever time, so he really is a contender. Not quite as quick as this man, though, Kamari Montgomery of the United States. Who year after year, whether it be at junior level or senior level, really produce some outstanding one lap runners. Although it's worth making the point that they haven't won the last three stagings of this event, and it has produced some outstanding winners when you look at them. Michelle Sedenio in 2014, he was the winner. De Guelin Santos, 2012, and Karani James in 2010. And, uh, all three of those men have. Well, got on almost seamlessly to produce or uh, turn out exciting performances at senior level and uh, forge very successful careers almost within a matter of months of leaving the junior ranks. So the uh, first of the three semi-final heats, Yassine in one, Pachetti in two, Walton in three, Bailey is in lane five. Zabanda in six, Montgomery in seven, Kitadani in lane eight, Zambrano in lane nine. The athletes in the first two lanes have yet to break 47 seconds. The likes of Zabanda and Montgomery, well, they are capable of running close to 45. Peter Kamari Montgomery, the American, the fastest man in this heat, but he's already been caught and passed there by Savanda of Botswana. Well, Savanda, look at him, tall and powerful, and the American, well, he's gone off, he's just about last at the moment. He's cruising down the back straight at the moment, is Kamari Montgomery, but he will get a shot. He perhaps won't have been concerned to see Savanda go past him, but when he realizes he's around this top bend, there are other men moving fast. He'll start to have to hurry, and he is hurrying now, is Montgomery. But it's Savanda the Botswanan, away and clear, standing way over six feet tall. And here comes Montgomery. And you have to say, it's been a very strange race being run by the American here. He's going to sprint easily into second place in the end. But you do have to wonder if that is the most economical way to run a 200-metre semi-final. Carabo Savanda was outstanding, though, wasn't he? Well, that it were a 200 meter semi final. Yes, Sibanda there, very, very impressive indeed. Nicely measured race and a personal best. A little extravagant, maybe, Martin. Was it necessary? 45 1 5. Well, I don't have that down as a personal best. Uh, in fact, it was Montgomery's best was 45 1 3. So it is a personal best for the uh, young man, Sibanda. Look at him, long and lithe, and Montgomery ran the strangest race. Why on earth he ran with such lethargy over the first 250? I don't know. He seemed to recognize the danger here, but then he met real uh, resistance from Zambrano on the outside. The Colombian in blue, nearest the camera, who is tying up badly. But uh, you're right, Montgomery's expended a lot more energy over that final 150 than he needs to have done if he would have spread his energy uh, more evenly over the full 400 meters mark and i'm sure that has a detrimental effect on performance i'm sure there's more lactate in lactate in the muscles well there's bound to be because i think if you just run it at 95 percent through the first 200 meters you're building up enough momentum just simply then to almost cruise through the last 200 what he's done he's gone off very modestly indeed he's actually had to kick and work really hard in the second race in the second half of the race so it's a bander 
confirmation of that lifetime best. In fact, three lifetime bests for the first four athletes. The second semi-final of the men's 400 metres. We know that Sibandra of Botswana and the American Montgomery are through from the first. Well, they're the figure of Edwin Ngiti of Kenya. Only fourth in his heat in 47-11. He's a 46-7 performer at his best in Kenyan. He goes in uh, lane two. I can tell you that in this second semi-final, the world top two are up against each other. It's a strange draw, but of course, the result of the results of the heats. A Joachim Dobber of the Netherlands, only sixth in his heat, got through as the fastest loser in 47-67. I suspect this will be his individual uh, championship over and done with after this one. Louis Charles of Dominica goes in lane four. Uh, 4709 relaxed 4709 in his heat then Matsu Kiyo of Japan who's a 4674 performer very close to that in his heat he goes in five then the world number one Martin's already mentioned Babaloki Tebe the world number one number two all time at 19 years of age he's run 4422 this year so close to being a world record Abdella Haroun is the world number two this year, the third fastest man in history for Qatar. He goes in seven. He's just 19 years old. Then uh, Musa Ali Issa goes in uh, lane eight for Bahrain. In fact, just looking, looks like the Bahrain is a no-show, as we see Ivan Nunez of Mexico on the outside there in lane nine. But how strange that the top two on the world rankings, Tebe of Botswana and the Qatari Haroun, are drawn beside each other in that order, Tebe in six, Haroun in lane seven. Only the top two go right. Can you imagine being one of the other six performers in this race and seeing that draw for this semi-final? Goodness me. Because Tebe and Haroun are the only two athletes in the world this year under 45 seconds. Tebe, an extraordinary talent. Won his heat in 46-25. Won the African Championships in Durban back on the 24th of June in 44.69. That 44.22, the world junior fastest time this year. An African junior record came at uh, Gaboron on the 21st of May in the National Championships. And this is his first season as a 400-meter runner. He's better known as a 200-meter man. Ran 20.56 at altitude last year, 20.21 this year. And for a man of just 19 years old, that's mighty fast. So the second semi-final of the men's 400 metres then. The world number one, the second fastest in history, Babaloki Tebe of Botswana there, goes in lane six. Haroun, outside him of Qatar, is the third fastest in history at under 2,400 metres. Well away without any trouble at all. Haroun, third from left. Haroun actually second to left, excuse me, it's Tebe in the black, who's uh, third from left there, in lane six, moving very smoothly indeed. Haroun has gone out pretty aggressively, the others struggling to go with this. Masukio of Japan is a long way down in lane five. Louis Charles of Dominica in four is also struggling, but look at these two, a class apart, quite frankly. And Tebe turned it on around that bend and he's past Haroun as if to say, get back and stay in your place, I am number one head nodding style of his it's not a smooth run is it but 44 66 oh my word i can tell you there's only five other juniors in the history of uh, one lap running who run as quickly as that that was extravagant i wonder whether it he might pay for it come the final probably not 44 67 in fact only athletes like LaShawn Merritt and Laguelin Santos and Karani James have gone quicker, Steve Lewis as well. But that's a very, very special run indeed. And Haroun, I suppose, Martin, in Fakata in the lane outside him, almost gave him something to shoot at over the first 300. Yes, it's quite a stunning performance. Consider these gentlemen are both teenagers, and he is cruising to sub 45 seconds. Absolutely cruising. He's making very good athletes look rather ordinary. Well, that winning time, very impressive indeed. 44-67 in a semi-final. Tebe of Botswana, the one from Carabo Sabande, his countryman. Wasn't bad either in the first heat. These are the athletes lining up. 
for the third heat in the semi-final round. Wu Guang there of China in lane eight. And outside him, the Briton Cameron Chalmers, the young man from Guernsey, a student in Bath. Proud to be wearing his British vest. And I've done a bit of a count on how busy Cameron Chalmers has been this year. Now, taking into account all the races he's done indoors this year, Cameron Chalmers, well, we're in the seventh month of the year, and this is 27th race at 400 metres. So here is the full lineup. And in two. Salomon Croatia in three, Banfield Canada in four, Jeffrey Kipritich, who was actually the fastest qualifier from the first round heats, in round 46-23 in yesterday's first round, although the level just been cranked up a little bit, to say the least, in these semi-finals. Kipritich in five, Taylor, another heat winner of Jamaica in six, just 16, the World Youth Champion. Wilbert London the third, cracking name, the American, in lane seven and Wu Yuang there of China inside the Britain in lanes eight and nine so just the first two guaranteed of a spot in the final at the moment Banfield of Canada has gone off in a very committed fashion there in lane three starting to hunt down Kipritich the American Wilbert London well, he may well have seen his countryman in the first heat, Kamari Montgomery, who almost fell out of the blocks and coasted through the first 200. London the third, making no such mistake. Well, he's London the third, but he's pretty intent on being London the first, I think, in this final semi-final. He comes into the straight with a three-metre lead on Kipritich. London of the United States, Kipritich rocking and rolling, coming through there. He might even snatch the lead. Indeed he does. Kipritich won, London the third two, if you know what I mean. And they are the qualifiers from this particular heat. Very straightforward in the end for both the Kenyan and the American. But those times dwarfed by the quality of the running in the uh, second semi-final, Martin, just to reiterate in case you've just joined us that uh, the world number one, Babaloki Tebe of Botswana, the 19-year-old, running 44.67 to win the second semi-final. I mean, what, about five or six metres quicker than that win from Kipritich. Good though the run is, 45.38, a fabulous new personal best. But if you look at these times, Tim, and I'm doing this without looking at the stats book, if we'd have gone right to the start of the 80s and looked at things like the uh, Olympic final in 1980 and even the first World Championships in 83, there weren't that many people running low 44s, were there? And we could see two or three men do it here. That is the level of this competition. It is outstanding, isn't it? Astonishing, yes, it is indeed. Great run there, by the way, from the uh, Britain coming through. Cameron Chalmers just trying to check for his uh, time. But uh, there it is. He's run a lifetime best as Cameron Chalmers, 46.51 great run it may well have been this 27th race of the year but if it takes you 27 races to get to your fastest time that is what you do tremendous run by a huge margin as well and unofficially i can confirm that